We are traveling to the motherland for books about Africa right after this. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shayla and I'm a homeschooling mom of four. In the last video, I did a review of Gather Round Homeschool's Africa unit. Um, and so I wanted to go ahead and share the books that we decided to get to go along with that. You don't have to be doing a unit study to enjoy these books. These are just some really easy reading, some fiction, nonfiction, lots of different genres. So make sure that you check the description box. I'm gonna list all of the books, all the authors and links where you can acquire those. Um, and I'll try to categorize them in a uh, cohesive manner. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the preschool books first. Uh, the first one is called Peekaboo Morning and it is a toddler story, really cute illustrations. Um, the little toddler is playing with uh, their parents. So really simple, really cute. My daughter really enjoyed uh, this book. She's three. Um, so going over family members um, and playing peekaboo, so super cute. The next book that I have for you is called An African Alphabet. This is by Eric Walters. Um, and so as you can imagine, um, every page is going over a different letter of the alphabet. So um, really all my kids like this book because they like the colors um, and just the vibrancy of the pictures there. Um, and then of course they got a chance to learn about maybe some animals that they um, had never heard of before. Uh, the next book that I have for you is called Baby Goes to Market. And so this baby is going to an African market, picking up all the things, counting um, the different fruits um, and vegetables that his mom is buying. Um, and so again, my daughter really likes all the colors, um, being able to count together. I thought this was really cute for her. The next book is called Jambo Means Hello. It's an um, Swahili alphabet. And so we've we've talked quite a bit about Swa Swahili in the house because of Lion King um, and all of the Swahili words that are used there. Um, and so this one, a little less color, but I still really like the, the illustrations um, and it's just simple lettering. And I also like that it really gives the pronunciation of the word there. Um, and so I thought, this is a really good book for them. So now they're walking around, <laughs> my kids are walking around the house speaking Swahili whenever they can. This next book is called I Lost a Tooth in Africa. Now this story is about a girl who lives in the United States um, and she is flying to Africa to uh, meet some of her parents' family. So they're traveling to Mali. Um, and so obviously as the title would suggest, she loses a tooth there. You can see the family. So again, one thing that I love about African culture is just such the vibrancy um, and just color and like richness and heritage and culture. Like it's just, it's beautiful to me. Um, and so my kids really loved this story. Uh, moving on to the books about animals. Um, I got a couple, not as many as I probably wanted to, um, but nonetheless, I did get a few. So this next book is a Cat in the Hat book, uh, Safari So Good. And so of course, Cat in the Hat and all the friends are going on a safari. Um, and so they're as they're traveling through, they're learning about the different animals, the different things that they're seeing. Um, and one of the things that I like about this book is that there is a glossary in the back. So you can actually learn about the different uh, vocabulary words that were given within the book. Um, and so I had my older two, my eight-year-old and my six-year-old um, go through and make sure that they read the glossary to make sure that they understood the vocabulary words that were there. Again, really bright and vibrant pictures that all of the kids loved. This next book is a chapter book. It's called Safari Pug. It's a, um, from the series um, Pug Adventures. And it's from the same author that writes uh, like Fancy Nancy and some of those other uh, character books. Um, and so Safari Pug, this pug goes, ends up going on a safari. So this pug ends up going on a safari. He's super scared about it and ends up uh, facing his fears, conquering his fears. And so there are only six chapters in the book. The chapters are pretty short. There's not a lot of words. So it's kind of like an easy reading sort of thing. Um, but my six-year-old really enjoyed reading this book and he was actually able to um, retain like understanding of what was actually happening. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's one of his first chapter books that he's read. 
Okay, this next book is called The Ugly Five. <laughs> um, and this is about these five animals. It's the wildebeest, the warthog, spotted hyena, the lappet faced vulture, and the stork. And so in this book, we're learning about all the special things that uh, these animals can do, even though they don't look uh, the nicest. They are some, still some really cool animals. Um, so of course, anything gross, ugly, stinky, whatever, like my boys, they love books like this. This next book is called Giraffes Can't Dance. Now this isn't like a nonfiction book about um, animals, but it's still an animal nonetheless. Um, this is a book about a giraffe who cannot dance. He's too tall, his neck is too skinny, all these things. Um, and so he gets encouraged uh, by a little creature, a cricket, who says that, you know what, you can do anything. And so really bright colors. Uh, my kids really enjoyed this one as well. The next one is a National Geographic book. So definitely nonfiction. It's called Roar, um, 100 Facts About African Animals. And so as you can imagine, there are lots of different facts about African animals. <laughs> um, and so my kids actually are starting, the National Geographic books are starting to grow on them. They didn't really like them at first, um, but I'm happy to see that they are getting into it. So real life pictures, not um, illustrated pictures. And so that's pretty cool as well. The next book is called Hippos Are Huge. Um, my daughter, for whatever reason, really liked this book. And I'll, I'll show you why in a second. Of course, this is like, so this is all about what hippos do, right? How they eat, how they fight, how they go underwater. I'm trying to find the page. Here's the page that was their favorite. Now, can you imagine why that page was their favorite? If you have children, then you know. So my kids love learning about hippos and how powerful they really are. I didn't really know like they were all that powerful, but apparently they are. So you learn something new every day. All right, next up we've got Chicken in the Kitchen. And so this is a story of a girl who finds a giant chicken in her house um, in Nigeria. And so she uh, decides to follow it and she goes on this uh, really cool adventure with the chicken. And so again, there you go, she's dancing. Super cute book uh, for the kids there. So the next book that I have here is called Cheer Cheer Singing. Um, and so this is a story of a little girl who wants to help her parents, um, but she keeps essentially being in the way. Um, and so she's trying to discover what what it is that she's good at because she's got her parents and grandma and whoever else she's got her parents who are good at different things and she's trying to discover what it is that she's good at um by the title i'm sure you can discover that it's singing um and this is actually written by the same author as um for you are a king and child which i got that book as well uh, and that's this book here um and so this is all about uh, Kenyan child and the things that Kenyans, Kenyan kids do, um, but really realizing that they're not all that different from American kids. You got the kids here playing soccer. You got them going to school. And so I really like, again, the illustrations in this one. So next up, we've got uh, Mrs. Chicken and the Hungry Crocodile, and the crocodile wants to eat the chicken. The chicken tries to persuade the crocodile that they are sisters um, to try to get away. And so, um, and so this is kind of like a folktale, similar to a folktale, um, but also it teaches kids about maybe even some of the similarities between the, um, the chicken and the crocodile, but essentially, the chicken tricks the crocodile and she was able to get away. All right, next up, we've got some um, books on different countries. Um, and I will start, well, actually not this one. This is kind of an outlier. I don't really know what category to put this in, but this is a really popular book um, called Sulway. And my kids loved this book. And this is all about a little girl who is discovering um, just the beauty that she has in, in herself. Um, and so I think that this is really special because it's something that our kids need to know. Um, it's something that, you know, people have been taught for a long time that brown skin is bad, um, dark skin is bad, and that's totally not the truth. And so it's really good to have 
books like these that show um, and depict and teach kids that their skin is beautiful, that what they have to offer, even beyond their skin, their intellect, um, their creativity, um, their ingenuity is something of value that they have to offer to the world. So we really, really enjoyed this book. All right, so now on to the countries. This book uh, called Ethiopia, as you can imagine, is all about the country of Ethiopia. Um, and so I should have made a video about this, but we have um, several friends who are Ethiopian, but um, one in particular came to our house and um, actually brought some authentic um, Ethiopian pieces and artwork and food for us to try. Actually, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. That is um, a, um, it's a piece of art that, actually, I'll just show it to you. I'll show it to you. It's a piece of art um, that shows a woman making um, the bread and the, uh, the pan that it's cooked on, I believe is called an ale. He let us have that. So I thought that was really special. Um, they got to try um, food and stuff like that from there. So this next book is called Brothers in Hope. Uh, this is a story about the Lost Boys of Sudan. I don't know if you guys know, but back in the 1980s, there were like thousands and thousands of boys, a lot of them under the age of 10, who were forced to travel um, like thousands of miles in order to find refuge because of all the fighting in the war that was happening within the country. And so they became known as the Lost Boys. And so Mary Williams created a foundation to try to help um, the lost boys of Sudan. Um, and so she, her goal was to create awareness and to raise funds for them to get an education and all those things. So this, um, this book shares their story. The next book I've got is The Water Princess. Um, this isn't about a specific country, but this is about a quest for this girl that you see here on the front to get uh, clean water to all across Africa. We know that there are lots of people who don't have um, clean running water or drinking water and it's difficult to locate. And so that's something that's very important. Um, and there are many efforts that are going on right now today to try to make that happen for people. I'll show you some of the pictures in here. Lots of oranges and blues. So that's really cool. Last but not least, we've got the girl who buried her dreams in a can. This is a true story of a girl um, in Rhodesia. And there, uh, girls and women were not allowed to educate themselves. So she taught herself how to read and write and uh, math by counting cattle. Um, and so then, uh, once she became a wife and a mother, she wrote her goals down um, and then she buried them in the ground. And so this was a, um, it's like a traditional ritual type of thing to uh, bury your dreams. And so her, one of her goals was to come to America to get several degrees. And so as you may know that uh, she did come to America, she did, she actually got three different degrees and uh, then began teaching students in Zimbabwe. And so at the end of the book, there are some real life pictures here that you can see. And so just a really special book um, to help kids to realize like, hey, your dreams are achievable, they're possible. Um, that was a lot, I know. If you made it to the end of the video, congratulations. <laughs> Um, make sure that you are subscribed and hit the notification bell because the next unit that we are doing is the human body. And I am so excited for all the things that we are going to accomplish within that unit. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget hiding is overrated. I'll see you next time.